Welcome back to the Joe Mac Podcast. I have a very special guest. He goes by the name of Sean G. Some say it's the dopest channel on YouTube. He conducts, he conducts impromptu interviews. He's some somewhat of a citizen journalist. He's a self-published author. Uh, he's so much more than that. Sean G, thank you so much for joining me from New Jersey. Hey, Joe, thanks for having me on your channel, man. Thanks for asking, man. It's a pleasure to be here with you, man. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much. You know, I've uh, I've I've taken a, quite a few pages out of your book, um, not literally, but figuratively. Uh, the way that you conduct interviews, uh, I want to I want to get into all that. Can we before we do that? Can we just give the viewer a brief snapshot of your life and who you are? All right. Well, my name is Sean G. I'm a published author. You can check both of my books out on my website. I'm gonna be publishing that bigcartel.com. Also have a YouTube channel, as Joe's already told you. I got the Flyers channel on YouTube. It's going to be publishing. Uh, I'm also an options trader. I'm also a real estate guy. Um, my background is I have an accounting finance background. Uh, but at the moment, I'm a single father. But at the moment, I'm pretty much a full-time YouTuber, man. I had a window cleaning business, so I kind of... Kind of, kind of do it all, man. You know. How did you? How did you recognize that opportunity? Like, you know what? YouTube's the platform I want to be on, and this is the type of content I want to create. How, where was? Where? Where did that take place for you? When I wrote my first book, I published it December two thousand seventeen. I said that the best way for me to promote this book is probably through YouTube. I didn't even have a YouTube channel at the time. I wrote the book. My man up the street shot the video, the interview of me talking about the book. I set up the YouTube channel, and that's how I got into doing YouTube. You know, okay. it was purely to promote the book. But it has gone, you know, as you can see, it's it's evolved and morphed into something much bigger than that at this point. Gotcha. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so the book is titled Astigmatism in My Soul. There's two volumes of that. What is that title? Kind of a two part question. What is that? What does the title of that book mean to you? And when you wrote the book and finished it. What was your what was your thoughts back then? I, I want everybody to be familiar with this with this work. I mean, how 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 did that the stigmatism in my soul, man? Uh, the medical definition of an astigmatism, it's a defect in the cornea of the eye which causes a blurred vision. And I wrote this book, both these books, volume one and volume two. You can get them on my website gonna be publishing that bigcartel.com the link will be beneath this video when I wrote this book Joey uh, I went as deep as I could go inside of myself and I wrote this book holding nothing back and in astigmatism is a defect in the eye which causes a blurred vision so when astigmatism in my soul is a defect in the soul that caused the blurred vision of the way I view life and the way I rectified and remedied that astigmatism was to write and be uh, just like to write my story and write my truth, man. And, and that's how the title of that book came to be. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for sharing that. Have you always been that open type of person? Nah, 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 nah. I didn't fuck with none of this shit, what I'm doing with you. I um I shunned I shunned social media. Um I didn't I resisted all types of uh social media. I wanted nothing to do with it. I'd much rather stayed low key off the radar, and that's pretty much how I live my life. You know, that's yeah. So this is this is all new for me. When did you decide that you wanted to be off the radar? That I wanted to be off the radar. I, 
I mean, back on, I mean, uh, on the radar rather, was this after the book? Did you figure, Hey, look, I'm going to write this book. And, and did you feel like that wasn't enough at that point that you realized that you really had to promote it and push it out there and you were looking for different avenues to do that? Is that kind of the, what I'm understanding? Well, really Joey, man, you know, I'm, um, I did the YouTube thing to promote the book, right? And um, in order for me to promote the book, you know, you, I have to get out front and I have to represent the book. So, you know, it doesn't make sense to, to write a book and try to sell it and you don't do any kind of promotion. And, and I'm, I'm in sales. I'm I'm a salesman by trade. If you check my channel out, that's what I do. My mouthpiece is strong, and um, you know I understand that you have to tell people what you do, and uh, you know as a result of that, um, you know this is pretty much the path that I've been going. And you know when you when you you find out, I find out that we have, we as a people have more in common with each other than what we think. And we try to lead, we try to lead these lives where we're clandestine and we're in the dark and we're cloaked and nobody, but we all, you know, go through the same shit and we all, you know, have more in common than what we believe. You know, so that's that's kind of how how that how that went. I don't know if I answered your question. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that. So, you initially you shunned, as you said, you shunned social media. You wanted to be the type of person that was low key, kind of off the grid. But then you started slowly realizing, hey, look, man, um, you know. Well, well, let me tell you this: the germination of that is. I, uh, I'm, I was a licensed real estate broker and I had a tax business and, um, I ended up getting investigated, indicted and sent to federal prison for preparation of fraudulent tax returns. And what I was doing was helping people get back bigger refunds than what they were supposed to. And when I was living that kind of lifestyle, you know, I, I wanted to stay low key because I knew I was doing wrong. You understand what I'm saying? So I didn't want to be all out there like that. But when I got busted, they put my case all in the media over here in North Jersey. If you go on Google and type in my name, gun be tax, a whole sheet of paper will come up with all about my case. And at that point, like the shit they wrote about me and how they wrote about me was, yes, I was wrong, I was guilty for what I did, but that didn't encapsulate the totality of who I was, right? But if you just read that and had never met me and never knew me, the slant and the bent with which they described me, you would think like, yo, yo this, this dude here is a piece of shit, right? So I'm sitting in the joint and I'm saying like, yo, I gotta rehabilitate my name, you know, cause I got a son who's a junior and and me and you was talking about this before we started recording, that a motherfucker, you gotta control your own narrative. Now these people, these reporters that have wrote this shit about me in the news and in the paper, and even the special agents in the government, they had never met me. They had never sat down, wrapped me, we never had a slice of pizza. But you know, you just took this one event and you just painted my whole name with this, right? So I said, I right, bet, that's how y'all wanna get down. All right, so what they really did was when I wrote the book, because the book is, it's semi-autobiographical, and it's a lot of my thoughts and opinions. It's like a compendium of my thoughts on a bunch of different topics. I said, well, all right, I'm going to let it all hang out. And I'll tell you who the fuck I am. You don't, you don't tell the world who I am without my consent. I'll drive this car. And at that point, that's when... I started doing the YouTube, and as you mean, you was talking before we came on, you know, now you're starting to see when I'm sitting in the car, shooting my videos in the car, I'm kind of going deeper with a lot of life shit that touches everybody's life, 
You understand? And it's really just showing you like, yo, this is me. So like whatever they said or whatever they wrote, you know, that shit is secondary to, to what I'm telling you who I am. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, yes, we were speaking on the call bef uh, before we went recorded, and that's exactly what you said. You know, you want to be the type of person that controls your own narrative, and you strike me as that type of person. I mean, that's that's what got me interested in your channel and, and your work, and um, that's the type of person I aspire to be, is a person that is able to own his own story and be able to communicate that effectively, so um, I definitely appreciate you being who you are so like a be, man <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Nobody else. yeah now uh thank you so much for that so as far as the business aspect what's more lucrative publishing a book or having a successful youtube channel that monetizes well they're both you know i'm cross-marketing both of them you know i'm using the youtube platform to promote my books and my t-shirt there's my boxes with all my t-shirts in them i got my my clothing line, and I'm selling books through, you know, people are checking out my videos and they're like, yo, I want to read this dude's book. So they go on my website, they buy the book, then they get a shirt and then they see the videos and 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 my feedback, the feedback that I'm getting from the people has been money, man. Motherfuckers like it, man, from all over the world. It's crazy. I never had no idea that people in Chile, People in Kazakhstan, Italy, Portugal, Nigeria, Morocco, Eritrea, UK, all over the world would be like, Sean, man, you saving my life, yo, your channel is, yo, know, this shit is crazy, man. I never, this was not in my dream, man. This was not in my plan. My plan was, let me sell a bunch of books, give me some money and get out of the way. But now, I got dudes, young kids saying I'm like an uncle to them. I'm like a father they never had, all this kind of shit. So the channel has morphed into, it ain't even really about the cheese with me no more. It ain't even about the money. You know, I'm helping motherfuckers, man, and, and that's more important. Now, I'm going to give you some money in the process, but if I can help a motherfucker, that's really what I'm about. Wow. Wow. Thank you for that. So it's there's kind of a bigger picture to it than just, hey, look, I'm gonna make a few dollars selling my story. You know, this is this is like, hey, look, I'm influencing people enough to the point where they're considering me as a family member and we've never met before. Yo, I had a kid tell me, Joey, how did I meet this kid, man? He bought a book. And my policy is if you buy a book for me or a shirt, when I see your order come in, if you leave your phone number, I call you to tell you thank you. This kid buys a book. I don't know this kid from nobody. I call him up. He says, Sean, I had decided to kill myself, man. And I went on YouTube to look for some ways to take my life. And your video came up. And I watched your video, and I sat there, and I binge watched all your video, videos, and I didn't take my own life. And when he told me that, when somebody tell you something like that, it's, all, it's, it's different. Everything changed for me at that point. Like, this channel, it ain't really no more for me. Motherfuckers look forward to my videos at 8 o'clock East Coast time, 12 o'clock East Coast time. They like waiting for me to drop something. So that's that's how, that's where this channel has gone, man. Wow. Wow, that's pretty incredible. So, I mean, look, this, this guy, this kid was thinking, hey, you know, whether he was going to do it or not is really irrelevant. He was searching uh, ways to end his own life. He saw my video. He saw your videos, came across that, kind of dove into that, and decided, hey, look. I want to live. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to take my life no more. I want to live. That shit is heavy, man. And see, that means, see, because what comes from the heart reaches the heart. 
If I'm coming from my heart, I'm gonna reach your heart. If I'm coming with bullshit, you're gonna see that and you're gonna be like, man, I don't, you're gonna run in the other direction. So obviously something I'm doing is helping people. And I've I've and what's dope about what's dope about this shit, Joey, the most Spanish kids, Asian kids in Hong Kong, white kids, black kids, Jewish kid, Muslim kid. All they all call me like yo, you like an uncle to me, man. And it's just showing me that a lot of people out here, man, especially these young dudes, you know, they lack direction, man. You know, and they lack in that kind of guidance from an older male figure in their life. And it's from all ethnicities, man, all around the planet. Brazil. Yeah. So it sounds like that's kind of opened up your eyes to the reality of humanity. This shit is deep, man. Wow. This shit is deep. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing all this. Uh, this is very valuable. You know, this is, um, this is kind of the day, I mean, today's current day and age, everybody has the ability to share their story, obviously. Uh, the question is how many people are comfortable with sharing scared. their story? Yeah. They scared. But see, Joey, man, I had a $1.2 million net worth, man. Nine rental properties, a $41,000 year income. I was wearing $3,600 Hickey Freeman suits, flying all over the world, Africa, South America, everywhere. And in the motherfucking twinkling of an eye, all of that shit was gone. And I was in federal prison. And the next step lower from federal prison is the graveyard. So it don't get no lower than where I got. And at that point, you know, I ain't scared of nothing. When you go through that and you survive that shit, you know, and it got dark in my life, man. But I ain't, it ain't much I'm scared of, man. So say what you want, do what you want, you know. But see, my, 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 my energy come through the screen. When I spoke my videos, you know, my confidence, you see my videos, man. My confidence, my self-esteem, my shit's up here. Yeah. yeah. But it has to go down into the dirt before you can get it up here. You got to get fucked up. You know, but I came back. So a lot of people walk around in life, they want to put up this facade, they want to wear a mask and let the world all the TV this way, and they watch a lot of TV and see fake motherfuckers on TV. I want to be like them on. Everybody want to be somebody else but themselves. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And uh, like you said, people, not everybody's real uh, ready to be as transparent and as open and candid as I am. Mm -hmm. What do you, what, in, thank you for that. So what advice do you have for the guy or the gal that's looking at your content and they're thinking to themselves, man, I wish I could be that open about my life. I mean, uh, but I feel like X, Y, Z is holding me back. What advice would you have for them to kind of get over those initial feelings of discouragement? If you scared to be who you are, then there's this, this the self-love ain't always at 10. The self-love might be at four and a half, five. And the other five and a half, five is self-hatred. For some reason, you may think that people are gonna reject, they're not going to like me if I'll be who I am. And that's your own, that's your own statistics to your soul that you got. That's all your own blurriness that you got to clear up. Ain't no amount of advice I can tell them on, but if you, if you, you know what I'm saying, it's, you got to you gotta dig who you are. You either like who you are or you don't. And I'm talking about on a deep level. I ain't talking about that surface shit where motherfuckers go, oh, yeah, I love me. I like me, man. Yeah, all right. It sounds good. It sounds real good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, fantastic. So self-love is where it kind of starts. Now, did you, how was... 
I'm trying to think, man, because I understand that nobody's nobody that's had an experience being confined wants to glorify that that place. However, you've you've stated that you know the experience that you had that experience kind of um it's sharpened me man it's sharpened me man because because everybody abandons you man everybody abandons shoots you in the head man your lady your wife your, your family your friends your favorites motherfuckers leave you in the dust to die you forget and you end up being by yourself. And you end up being alone with yourself with no other person to call on to help you but you. And then you get put in a place like federal prison where you want to compound with 1,100 dudes and nobody cares whether you live or die. You have to care instantly that you live or die. You have to care. And, you know, you. I rebuilt myself, man. I rebuilt myself, man. I met some good dudes in there, man. I met some sharp dudes, man. I met some wizards in there, man, that helped me, man, put my fractured self-esteem back together, along with a lot of work that I did. I did a lot of writing in there. I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of soul search and a lot of self-examination. Because when you fucked up, see, I was 45 years old, it's happened to me, man. I was going for $2 million at 45 years old. You a baby, you 33. <laughs> so, and I, when I got out, I was 47. I had to start all over with $1,900, man. Mm -hmm. And um, so you, you learn to rely on yourself, man. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say every, thank you for that. Now, when you say everybody left you or everybody's going to leave you, should one expect everybody to stay with you during that type of process? That's a great question. And maybe it was my fault that, see, because what I learned when I got, when, when I fell, right, what I learned when when everybody really came when, when everybody's true color came when everybody's true colors were revealed what i learned was i was looking at them through a windshield of which they were not looking back at me through the same windshield and when you got a lot of money and when you can help a lot of people motherfuckers come around you solely for that so really when I got to the point, I said, it was your fault. It was your fault that you was looking at these people that way. And a lot of them told you they were no good, but you, you, you overlooked it or you gave them the benefit of the doubt. You refused to believe that they would do that to you. Now, there's certain people that you expect that would bounce on you, you know, like the lady, you know, uh, people you real close with. But they're gonna leave you, man. They're gonna leave your ass. They're gonna leave you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, so I'll just kind of recap that. I got a page worth of notes right here. So Let's do it. Yes, sir. Um, so to sum it up, you know, if if you had to sum it up, you know, it would essentially it sounds to me like what what uh what you're saying is, hey, look, you're gonna find out. Who's going to be there? Who's not going to be there? You're going to find out what's real about you and what's not real about you. Or at least you should because you're, you're there face to face with yourself. There's nobody else there. Guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. Guaranteed. Now, does a person have to be in that position to realize that? Or what can they do to kind of check themselves early and kind of go through that? How, how, how does somebody do that, man? You know, I often, I often, that's a great question. I often uh, contemplate that question mm. because it seems as though a lot of the comments that I get and a lot of the feedback I get from my channel is that a lot of the civilians who've never been to prison, they want, they want that type of quality where 
Um, you see dudes that have gone to prison and they're just different. The discipline game is different. The mentality is different. The, the drive is different. And it seems like regular civilians, like they can't reach that level. Like they can't get there. You know, on the workout tip, on the mental tip, mm. on the spiritual tip. And I often say with Sean, is it necessary that you have to, maybe you don't have to go to prison or maybe you have to go to prison or maybe you have to crash and burn in another area of your life in order to be able to go in deep and tap in to that, that new self. Because I've met a new Sean, man. I met a show I didn't even know existed. You get introduced, you get introduced to a new self. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of people, a lot of people fold. They 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 fold. And they and they uh they fold and they die even though they're physically still alive. You got me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. But you gotta live. You gotta live, man. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for that. So, yeah. So, kind of what I'm hearing is when you're speaking to people, civilians, as you said, people that have never been to prison. Um, it kind of, you know, in a similar way, it kind of reminds me of speaking to people that haven't been in the military, right, or haven't been in a scenario where distractions are eliminated from your immediate vicinity, right? Which enables, kind of gives an opportunity for an individual to kind of make a decision in that scenario. It's like, okay, I got some choices here. I can either distract myself uh, until this time is over or, or until something changes, or I can uh, take this time to Face reality. It sounds like you chose the latter. Yeah. So it's kind of up to the individual uh, in that challenging circumstance to, to rise to the occasion. Yeah, I had no choice. I knew, I knew that I couldn't be the same motherfucker that I was. Because he had failed me. I had failed me at 45 years old, something was obviously wrong. If I ended up in federal prison, something was wrong. And I had failed me. So I knew going in there, I said, well, I can't come out. The same nigga that's going in here can't be the same nigga that's coming out of here. Mm -hmm. so, so you got 15 months, 15 days, and 19 hours to get this shit right, to go back home. And you got to start all over from nothing, and you was a millionaire. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which which didn't mean jack at that moment. You were basically. I, I mean, what I mean is that uh, all those worldly material, you know, it mean a motherfucking thing. That don't mean shit. Yeah, yeah. It can't help you. Yeah, yeah. Twenty five dollars. Uh, gold label Macanudo cigar smoking at Club Macanudo on Park Avenue, 63rd, didn't mean nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, six, yeah. Women, six women uh, didn't mean nothing. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you, you when uh, when you were stripped of all those worldly possessions, it was you. Your mind, your body, and your spirit in a uh, in a challenging. You know, I just I feel like there's a lot of people that can kind of relate to that scenario. Um, unfortunately, it, it in a lot of cases it does take a uh, a hardship for us to kind of realize the the greatness within us. Uh, do you think that you would have found and realized the greatness within you at some point had it not been for that scenario? No. And that's why I think and I'm doing a video this I think 
the motherfuckers who rap. I think people that left the trade, I think the ones that told me that I was done, that it was over, that didn't write me, that didn't come see me, I thank them. I thank them. Because I'm a lot of times better than what I was. And I'm in debt right now. I'm 13. I'm 11 times greater than what I was. I was sitting on my other 31,000 little cash. I could stay right on the floor. And I, 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 I thank them. I'm actually located in Southern California. I, I, I'm originally from the East Coast. I grew up in Virginia mostly. I've been out in Southern California for the past over six years now. Uh, so you got you to start. You got to start going to asking people for interviews, man. All yeah. the people out there, go knock on the door. Yeah. Anybody that's interested, you know, that's in, you, you're interested in, all they can say is no. Yeah. You know, other YouTubers, other celebrities, football players, basketball players, yo, come on my I want come on my podcast. Let me interview you. Yeah. And that's how your channel is gonna grow. I love it. Absolutely. Can't argue with that. You know, you never know unless you ask. <laughs> all they can say is no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Sean. Well, thank you so much again. I mean, this has been a, a real fantastic opportunity, man. I've learned so much, man. Man, you got it. What happened to the thing? There you go. Uh, we, good, we good now. We good now. So, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, too. It's like, bro, I'm I'm freaking, you know, I grew up on the East Coast, you know. I don't come across dudes like you every day on the West Coast. Safe to say that, you know. It's like, you know. So seeing a guy like you... Not just being your. You say like me. What you mean, like me? Oh, that's a good. Well, yeah. Let's 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 talk about that. Um, yeah, because I mean, let's. What is what does that mean? What do I mean by that? Uh, an East Coast guy, man. I mean, look, you can't hide it. You know, what I mean, it's like, and why would you want to? You know, you're the type of person like, bro. This is who I am. Uh, why would I want? You know, look, I'm out here, man. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's refreshing to, to, to experience that because it takes me back to, to you know, I, man, I'm from the East Coast, man. I grew up there, man. So I'm seeing you being you, letting yourself shine, your personality shine. Uh, and, then, and then you're also capturing the footage of the environment. And I'm just thinking, man, you know, I'm... I'm I can almost like when I show you like when I show all the graffiti and the subway trains and the buildings and all that in the in the videos, the streets. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good, man. It's good. Yeah. But uh, you know, just you being in the in, in the in them parks, man, it's like it's almost a privilege, you know. It's almost a privilege to because I can't be there in a the physical, you know, I'm not there in a the physical form, man. And even if I was, you know, I wouldn't be interviewing these. I don't, I don't think I'd be interviewing these guys, you know, but you are, man. And it's, uh, I mean, just the fact that we have these capabilities is, is baffling. You know, it's unbelievable, but it takes an unbelievable person. Thank you, man. To make a conscious decision to take this thing and do what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, man. Don't ever stop, man, because I'm watching you. Man, this shit don't never stop, man. <laughs> this shit don't never stop, man. And then, I mean, look, man, people love it. You know, here's the thing, too, but I mean, like, look, uh, I mean, your shit is golden, man. I mean, I feel like my shit is golden. You know, it's like uh, you, you talk, you're talking to fit over, you know, you're talking to the fit over 50. You're talking to the Fed look, you know, you're talking all these things, man. I mean, that is, you know, that is superstar shit. Thank you. I mean, and the, 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 not the problem, but the reality is that, look, 
everybody has the potential to be I mean there's too much content there's too much out there to sift through to find out who's really you know what's really what so that's that's the that's what we're up against you know that's what we're we're you know the challenge is that we're up against machines that you know I mean look mach you know big machines that are yeah. behind you know so that's but look the look the the tide the, look, I mean, the tide is turning because, hey, this is the rise of the citizen journal. It's just, it keeps on rising and rising. However, we go straight, what, we go what, straight to our, we go straight to our target audience. We don't have to have no intermediary. Yeah. The scary thing is that it's contention upon this. It's contention upon what we can't see, which is the internet. So, you know, we got to, we always got to keep in mind, look, like, just like you had to, you had the experience in prison, just like I had an experience going through a process where there was a lot of distractions eliminated. I had to kind of negotiate things on my, like, look, if this disappears tomorrow, if this, if that disappears tomorrow, you know, we got to really, we can't lose the awareness that that's a possibility. And that will probably happen at some point if not forever, at least for a period of time, there's probably a point where, yeah, you're not gonna be able to go on your little, you know. Strong possibility, strong yeah. possibility. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, man, uh, when that does happen, who's gonna be able to survive that, you know? Uh, you know, so we're getting a little deep into it, but you know, these are all things that um, I'm sure you think about as well. Well, Just keep moving, man. Nobody, Just keep moving. Nobody knows what tomorrow's gonna bring. You know, you know. If I take care of today, yeah, then tomorrow should be okay within my control. Now, what these big superpower countries and Russia and China and all this, I have no control over that. But if yeah, if I just control my space. Yeah, I'm gonna be cool. Yeah, it's good, man. It's where it starts. And hey, look. You're setting the example, you're leading by example, and more power to you. Thank you, man. Seems like a good place to end it right here, Sean. Peace out, Joey. Peace out, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate All you. Right. All right. We'll have to do a part two sometime. No doubt. No doubt. <coughs> Come out to Cali, man. We're going to get together. I'm going to get you on my channel, too, man. Get you on Oh, man. Channel. Hell yeah. I just got to, uh, yeah, I got to make sure I got, I, I, I at least need a, uh, Two or three exercises that I can really look good doing. <laughs> I can look good doing. The, I can look. I can look good doing what y'all are doing, but not for that duration. I'm like, okay, we gotta. Uh, All right, we'll get you straightened out, man. We'll work, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Sounds good to me, man. Looking forward to it. That'll give me something to uh, shoot for as well. You know. Yeah. I'm more of a I'm more of a walker hiker type guy, you know. Like I'll go out for a damn ten mile trek, man, and you won't you won't see me for several hours, you know. No distraction, no nothing. I'm just there, just things are just you know. After this, I'm probably gonna do that, you know. what I mean, I need that to for me to stay grounded, man. That's what's up. That's I what's need to up. eliminate all. The, but here's the thing, like I didn't learn how to effectively do this until this quarantine stuff. You know, so that's a wake-up call for me. If it wasn't for the court, I wouldn't be going on eight, ten-mile treks, man. That's what's I, would, I wouldn't be getting that mental clarity of, uh, you know, putting away, putting away the technology, you know, putting the shit away and, uh, and really getting, getting back to who, what, who, who and what I am, aside from all the BS, which is I'm just like you. I'm a, I'm a person who breathes, bleeds, and dies. Yeah. You know? And I gotta, I gotta look. All this, look. We can edit videos and have great conversation. We can do this stuff all day, hey man. But at the end of the day, I can't take none of that with me. Neither can you. You know, so I gotta, I gotta remember that. And I remember that when I go, when I'm out there eight miles, I'm like, fuck. This kind of, you know, this is this feel. You know, I, I, you know, I'm, 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 you know, this is coming to an end one day. You know, <laughs> this is coming. This is coming. To, you know. You know, every step that I take, even if there's, maybe there might be some pain or some say, you're like, man, look, when I, well, look, when I'm gone, I'm not going to feel any of these sensations forever. No, you out of here. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's over. Right. We all leaving. We all leaving. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't take it, it. Look, and I'm sure you'd agree with me. It shouldn't take for us to get to the point where we're on our deathbed, laid up, propped up. You know, you got what, whatever the fuck it is, uh, Price is Right or whatever. You know, it shouldn't take all. It shouldn't take us as a human, as humans, to get to that level to start reflecting on our lives at that point. You know, it, it, that's a. I think that's a huge tragedy, man. And I think that it really takes a conscious decision to close the laptop, turn this thing off, get the fuck out there, man. Put yourself in an uncomfortable scenario and kind of see what you're made of a little bit, man, because you're not, you look. Live, live, live life, live life. You know, I make my son, my son, he fuck with Fortnite a lot, and I let him fuck with Fortnite because the kids over here in the community, in the complex, they play. He plays with his classmates. But sometimes I tell him, yo, turn that shit off and go outside. And do whatever. Play catch with yourself, ride your bike, or go outside, go get into a fight or whatever. Get Go outside. We're not going to be in this house all day with these goddamn gadgets, man. We're not going to do that. We're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. You got to go out and interact with people. You got to speak to people. You can't be afraid of social interaction. Mm -hmm. you know? and I, think, I think, you know, my videos definitely exemplifies that the human interaction piece. You know, and, and I'm going into these rough neighborhoods and neighborhoods that people would be afraid to go. And I'm meeting these individuals that have so much to say. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the dialogue is so much different from what one would expect when you go into the South Bronx or when you go into Newark or if you go into Jersey City or Harlem. And I think that's the beauty of it too, man. Oh, yeah. I agree with you 100 percent man i mean you know you ask i mean look the stuff that i've learned from these guys from these, from these interviews that you've had it's like wow you know it's like really eye-opening stuff man it's um you're creating awareness man you know you're creating a lot of awareness to humanity and what we think and what we mm, you know you do, huh? what we, we we might think something initially but then we dig a little deeper it's like oh man mm. oh i can't pretend like i don't like i'm not seeing this and hearing this it's like oh mm. let me let me let me re-examine myself yeah 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 that's deep that's so powerful man i mean but look we can't be doing this shit 24 hours we can't be on a screen watching consume we look here's what i mean here's what look, we uh, we as humans we are consuming a unhealthy amount of information a lot of people. A on lot a, of people. you know uh are look, addicted to this shit man addicted. well yes 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 well the problem is you know our us as humans are not equipped and wired to consume all this information. I mean, the amount of information that we're consuming on a daily basis is more than seven lifetimes mm. of, a, of a guy that lived in the, in the 1500s. You know what I mean? I mean, just, if you really, so how do we, how do we, um, how do we keep sane? How do we keep grounded? You gotta develop the discipline to really, to shut it. You gotta pretend like it doesn't exist for a certain amount of time in your day. Whenever that may be, like, hey, look, the next 15 minutes, I'm going to just shut this off. I'm going to do something else, whatever it is. If I have an idea, I can write it down. You know what I mean? Like, this is like, this is survival of humanity. You know, this is us learning how to integrate technology, which is not organic to us as humans, into our lives, man. And, uh... And that goes back to what I was telling you about going to prison, man. You, you, you don't have that. And you're left with nothing but your thoughts and a notepad and a pen and time. And that's when you, you know, there is no cell phone. There's no women. There's no distractions. And exactly what you're saying, you get back in touch with your humanness. Good stuff, man. Well, I look forward to talking to you. Again. All right, Joe. Appreciate you, man. Any questions for me? Anything that, that you got that you were thinking? That we didn't... Okay, perfect, perfect.
Call so, me, man. You got my number on the email, man. Okay, for sure. All thank, right. you, thank you so much again. Looking forward to collabing when you come out to the West Coast too, man. We're going to do that. We're going to definitely do that.